الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي دون ان هدانا الله اللهم لك الحمد كما ينبغي بجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك سبحان الله لا امسك عليك انت كما اثنيت على نفسك وصلى الله تبارك وتعالى وسلم على سيدنا وسندنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا ومولانا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه وازواجه وذرياته واهل بيته ومن تبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين وبعد. All praises to Allah, all praises to Allah, all praises to Allah who guided us to this, who guided us to Islam, to Iman, and to his Mubarak house. On this Mubarak day, we were not to be guided, was it not that Allah had guided us? O Allah, to you is praise as is commensurate with the majesty of your countenance and the greatness of your authority. O Allah, we do not live in you with any praise we can come up with ourselves, rather we admit that you're the only one who knows the true extent of your praiseworthiness. And may the peace and blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon the servant and messenger, our master Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May the peace and blessing of Allah ta'ala be upon him and upon his noble companions and upon his pure wives and upon his Mubarak and blessed family and progeny and upon all of those who follow all of their way until the day of judgment. In a hadith narrated in the Shurab of Iman of Imam Behaqi, Rahimahullah ta'ala wa ta'ala. Behaqi is a master of Muhaddith. He is a master of Fatih. He is a master of uh, Muhaddith, a scholar of Aqidah from the uh, past of the Sunnah. They have the Rahim of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala and Eric's in the Shurab al a hadith regarding the virtues of Ramadan in, 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 in regarding the virtues of Ramadan uh, from Sayyidina Salman al-Farsi of Allah Ta'ala and it's a long hadith, it's a long hadith that when the sun was about to set, the moon was about to be sighted for Ramadan he gathered his Sahaba of Allah Ta'ala and put together to tell him what, what's coming, what's over the horizon. And this is a beautiful tradition. The least of the lesson that teaches us not being that a person needs to think about what they do before they do it. Now the model is this, do what you want, do what you uh, think you have to do or you need to do or what's right, and then afterward maybe if you attend a conference several months or even years later, you can say, Shit, such and such thing happened, I did this and that. What do you think about it? And then you can have a nice exchange of, of ideas. Whereas the tariqah that Rasulullah taught this ummah is what? Is that right knowledge precedes right action. Right knowledge comes before right action. So it's appropriate now that it's the month of Sha'ban that we should talk about Ramadan. You should think about Ramadan, you should plan Ramadan. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in this hadith that a great month, a magnificent month, a magnanimous month has cast, literally cast its shadow upon you. It's right over you right now. And this is the same situation that we find ourselves in right now, that this is a great month. And he lists a number of Allah, a number of Allah, a number of virtues of this month. Not the least of which is what? Is that if a person does something that's far, that's an obligation, like the five daily prayers, like the fast itself, like the paying payment of zakat for those people who owe zakat and for those people who zakat is due, whoever discharges a farm an obligation this month, that person will receive what? The person will receive 70 times the reward of uh, what they would have received had they uh, discharged that obligation at any other time of the year. And the person who does a, a nephil, and not a farm, a non obligatory act in this month, that person will receive what? The reward that they would receive as if they had done a far back and complete for It comes in a different narration from the Prophet Sallallahu that the Nafal Act receives one seventieth of the reward of the far back. The thing that you are doing above and beyond what the Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala made obligatory for you, there's less reward in that than there is in doing the thing that Allah Ta'ala has made obligatory upon you. So everything is shot out of one one bracket is scheduled of reward by the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine, imagine, somebody, somebody wants to impress other people, what will they say? They will they say, I bought my clothes from Walmart. Absolutely not. It's not an impressive thing to say, people are not going to be impressed by it. Even Walmart, which is the store that is 
a place that people would make fun of one another for shopping because it's not an extravagant place, it's not a special place. Even Walmart, even Walmart, the lot of Walmart said that in the hour of Jumaah, uh, between whatever, noon and 4 p.m., in the hours of Jumaah, we have such a sale that every single thing, every single thing you buy, you give us one dollar, we'll give you seventy dollars of store credit. Or one of those best. Obviously, this message that everybody is so biased that nobody would be tempted by it. But a lot of other people still would have. Why? Because that's a lot. Whose promise is more appealing? Whose promise is more true? Whose promise has more faith and benefit for you in it? In this world and in the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the heavens and earth for nothing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this thing for us, for the Ummah Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No Ummah before us had this month of Ramadan, had the gift of this month of Ramadan. No Ummah before us. It comes with the narration that the Sahaba of Allah ta'ala they heard the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tell the story about a man from the Ummah that came before us for 70 years straight. What did he do? He fasted during the day, he prayed during the night, and the entire time he was out on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, risking his property and his life so that the word of Allah ta'ala could be supreme. Imagine the superlative a reward that a person would receive from that. Comes that a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, just the dust of the, 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 the path, you know, the, the old days they didn't have, paved roads, so the, the horses and the carts would kick up dust, even people walking would kick up dust. Just the dust of the, 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 that's kicked up in the path that enters into your nostrils and bothers you just a little bit. Just that itself is the cause of all sins to be forgiven, and everything else after that is what? It says, Nurun ala it says, Light on light. It's just something that you're gaining and you're being elevated by the law to Allah already, spiritually, physically, financially, mentally, and in your health, in your wealth, and every single way you're being elevated. So the Sahaba of Allah who heard this 70 years consistently. A man who prayed during the night and fasted in the day was in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nowadays, if you mention this in the message, people will say, brother, this is a little extreme. Okay, let's try to, the community is a little bit weak. Let's not, let's not, you know, why, why talk about things like that? That's, you know, we're, let's just have a basketball tournament and call it a day. Basketball tournament is wonderful. I love basketball tournaments myself. No problem with basketball tournament. The idea is what? If you want to achieve greatness, you have to have it in front of you. A, an example that you're shooting for. You don't want it down and double down. And other things will happen along the way as well. There's nothing wrong with that. But what did the Sahaba of Allah do? What was their reaction? Rasulullah, this is too much. I'm, I'm not going to know. So, yeah, so uh, we wish Allah Ta'ala didn't give us lies that long that we could have given like that for the sake of Allah Ta'ala. Allah, they felt regret inside of their hearts. Allah Ta'ala didn't give us lies that are that long that we could have done that for the sake of Allah Ta'ala. Otherwise, we would, have, we would have loved to do it. We would have loved to do it. This is the occasion of the revelation of Inna and Tala al Muqfilin as al Indeed, we revealed it. What the Quran and Layla al Qadr, what the Quran and Layla al Qadr, what we'll explain to you what Layla al Qadr is. Layla al Qadr is better than Al Fishah. Layla al Qadr is better than a thousand months. If you sum up a thousand months and I divide it by 12, you have to 70 some odd years. This is what a gift Allah Ta'ala gave to this Ummah. So you know when you receive something that's precious, even the packaging that comes in is precious. Maybe there are certain things, I, you, know, you go and buy luggage from, from you know, when I start going to the airport, they have stores like Tumi and things like that. They have some amazing like, luggage bags, expandable, light, you know, holistic material. Allah Ta'ala knows what, you know, like, different like, slots for like two different laptops, and all sorts of different, you know, neat features that you're not going to find, you know, the luggage that you know we immigrated to America with, or that we got from our, uh, our, our grandma or whatever. If you look at the price tag of the bag, the bag is a thousand dollars. So you know, I don't even have a thousand dollars worth of stuff to put in the bag. How am I going to buy a thousand dollar bag? When the when the thing you're carrying is precious, even the packaging that comes in is precious. Allah Taala gave us the what? The month of Ramadan, and in it is what? The Ramadan of the Layla to Allah. This grab on what? This gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. didn't disclose which of the nights it is, but it's this beautiful gift. A person, if they catch it, that's it. Their entire destiny is made. In this world and the hereafter, their entire destiny is made. It's written that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with this person. Allah has accepted this person. Allah has freed this person from the fire. Allah has made this person. This is 
what? This is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Ummah. You have to prepare for it. You have to plan for it. What? Ahead of time. You have to prepare for it and plan for it ahead of time. You have to say, this is a month unlike other months, and it is a night unlike other nights. You have to look at your work schedule and your, your school schedule. You have to look at how you arrange the day. If you have days off, you take those days off in this time. It's okay, the vacation you want to go on, all these other things. Those things, what, what's worth more to you? Allah is Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for those days. What do you know that the person in the night that's worth a thousand nights, Allah Ta'ala, who accepts their prayer? That prayer is for the deen and for the dunya once it's accepted. The people for whom Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala accepts their prayer, they don't need to worry about the boss or about work. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala takes care of both the deen and the dunya for them. Allah Ta'ala takes care of both the dunya and the akhirah for them. If you don't believe me, look at the Sahaba of the Allah Ta'ala and the best of this ummah after its Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They came into Islam broke. They came into Islam with nothing. The wealthiest of them was somebody, even for the standards of late antiquity in which they lived, the wealthiest of them was still a simple person, was still like a villager. And how did they leave this world? How did they leave this world? Say that Zubayr bin Awam of the his, his estate is mentioned. They mentioned his estate. He, has, he died with four wives, and one of his wives inherited a certain amount of money. If you backwards calculate the Jamirah, that wives receive one aid, and if a person has more than one wife, each of them share of that aid, backwards calculate his, his estate, it comes to hundreds of millions of dollars in gold, in gold dinars, gold coins. This is not in the time in which the internet e commerce makes business easier than it ever was. This is not in this time. They left this world with the entire dunya, like exactly like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam promised them, the entire dunya was delivered beneath their feet. The next of the kings of Persia and Rome were delivered beneath their, their feet, and they were not people who spent their time worrying about anything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Dari Dinati, Sunnah of Ibn Majah, I said, Abdullah ibn Masrud radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Man ja'ala al-humuma, hamma al-wahida, hamma al-akhirati, the person who makes all of their worries and all of their concerns into one worry and one concern. The worry and the concern of their akhira, of their day of judgment, of their isab and their, 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 their uh, evaluation, and their body in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah ta'ala will guard that noble act and take care of all of their difficulties in this world. I didn't say. Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said it. I didn't say Rasulullah alayhi wa sallam said it. And you have generations. Khalafa and salaf, jeel and baqla jeel. Every generation after generation of people who took this seriously and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them the barakat of this promise that whoever makes their akhirah their greatest worry and concern, Allah ta'ala will take care of both their akhirah and their dunya. Allah ta'ala will take care of what? Both their akhirah and their dunya. This is the promise of Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now one might say, well, should we quit our jobs and just pray all day, and fast every day, and no more worry about work, and you know, what do we do? It's, it's not, they're a beautiful example for you in the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he used to pray sometimes, and he used to work sometimes, he used to fast some days, and he used to not fast some days. This is the deed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The month of Ramadan is around the corner. This is the time to what? To worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the time you focus on this thing. This is the time that you focus on this deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The rest of the time is part of your deen to work. It's part of your deen to earn. The hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There are certain sins that won't be forgiven except for prayer. And there are certain sins that won't be forgiven except for fasting. And there are certain sins that won't be forgiven except for Messiah and the Ayah. By, by the difficulty, the running back and forth, the difficulties that a person undertakes in what? In serving their family. Brothers and sisters, this time is what? This is the time for the worship and remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Back to the hadith of Bayhali, in which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam describes the Qadayl of Ramadan. What does he say? He says, Wa hushahu muwasa. Wa shahu muzahu ki yuzku mu'min. It is the month of what? Generosity. It is the month in which the risk, the, the uh, provision of the believer is, is, is expanded, it is increased. It is the month of generosity, it is the month in which the provision of the believer is what? Is increased. The person who gives the food for 
a fasting person to open their fast with, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells three benefits, three rewards for them. Not just one, three of them. The first one is Mabzala that that person is. Their sins will be forgiven. Their sins that they transgress in front of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, brothers and sisters, never, never think of any sin as a light matter. Anything that might make your ship sink on the day of judgment, anything that you may regret in front of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, it's not a light matter, it's a very grave and dangerous matter. Allah Ta'ala will forgive that person's sin. Allah Ta'ala Allah Ta'ala will free that person from the fire. Allah Ta'ala will free that person from the fire. Somebody said, well, aren't those two the same thing? Aren't there some people who go to the hellfire and be taken out? If your sins are forgiven, you never see it in the first place. If your sins are forgiven, you never see it in the first place. If you're free from it, at least the person is vouchsafed Imam that they should die on. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Such a shahada, such a testimony that will vouchsafe them that they not go to the fire forever. But it would be better if a person never sees, smells, tastes, touches the fire, never hears the screams of the people in the fire. It in and of itself would be such a punishment that it would cause a person to lose their mind if they were to even bear witness to it. Much less be inside of it. A person will be forgiven and their neck will be free from the fire. And the third thing is what? They'll receive from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the reward which is commensurate with what? The reward which is commensurate with the reward of the person who passed. Now, nowadays if you say things like this, someone says, listen brother, I'm a student, I'm broke, I'm, you know, the economy is not doing so well, it's a jobless recovery, it seems like Goldman Sachs is doing well, blah blah, give them back and their halal money, rectifies what other things that they do. I don't have any money for this. Who's more broke? You're the Sahaba of Allah Ta'ala. Who's more broke? You are the ones who used to not go three days to eat cooked food in a month. The ones who used to eat dates and, and, and water for a majority of the month. The ones whose chimneys no smoke would be seen for it. For days on end and week, weeks on end. You know what they asked? They said, Ya Rasulullah, we want to do this. We're down. This is it. So, done. But not every one of us is able to provide a meal for another person. Imagine if a person is not eating a meal on their own. Not every one of us is able to provide a complete meal for another person. Rasulullah says, no problem. No problem. The thing I'm talking about is what? If you just give someone a taste of milk. If you just give a person a, person a date. If you just give a person a sip of water. This, this will be enough for you to receive the reward of the one who fasted. This is what? This is mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are people who see our sharia and they become very scared and it's very daunting and they say, oh my goodness, this is an oppressive law. What kind of oppressive law is this? That you can have someone in a glass of water, you can have someone in a date. The ulama say that the meat of his hadith is even sought in from the person who not, he didn't buy the date, they're just in the masjid, they grab the plate and they hand the dates out to people. Even that person who has the dates out to people, that person will receive the reward of what? From the fall of the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will receive the reward of every person who fasted. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, well, he said if a person who gives a person enough to, enough to eat, right? Enough to eat so that they eat their fill. I, that person will drink from my cow. That person will drink from my fountain on the day of judgment. Such a drink that that person will never, never thirst from it again. For those of you who study the Aqidah, the hope of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a place that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is given as an honor for his ummah. Not everyone from the ummah will drink from it. Only those people who are true to him, to his message and true to Islam, those people they will drink from this watering place from this fountain. This is before the day of judgment. They'll drink such a drink that they never thirst from it again. What does that mean? You drink from the Garden of Jahannam? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. It's a protection for the difficulties of the day of judgment. So what Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said? What the person who this, whoever gives like a sip of milk or a taste of milk or a date or a sip of water, that person will receive the reward of the one who fasted who ate those things at the time of their thought, at the time of their opening their fast. The person who gives to another person enough that what? That they, they eat their fill, that they're satiated, that they're satisfied, that they're full. That person, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, promises that I will give you to drink from my heart. I will give you to drink from my heart, and he says in the same hadith, such a drink, such a drink, you'll never thirst again after that drink. It will protect you from the calamities of the hereafter, much less be a guarantee for a person entering into paradise. This is what this is the promise of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do you know? Do you know that this Ramadan, this Ramadan, there are people from this Ummah that will, that in this very community, by the way, there are people in this Ummah.
lives in this great community that are not going to be able to pay their bills. Did you know there are people in the room that say that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Pious people, righteous people, some of them are following the Quran, some of the people who pray in the message five times a day. When the uh, Adhan for Muslim is called, they will search from the garbage to eat their, to eat their iftar. And you know what they'll say when they do that? They'll say, this is not before they eat, and alhamdulillah, they're not. Imagine what the, if this is the reward for just helping a normal person. Imagine if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what would be the reward of sinful people like myself? What would be the reward of us having the opportunity to give just a small amount from our pocket in order for that those people to what? In order for those people to have the dignity of being able to eat properly and drink properly and the happiness of seeing their family, their children, their loved ones, their elders, not have to endure that pain, not to have to endure that hardship, not have to endure that suffering. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave all of us the tawfiq that we should reach Ramadan and that we should be able to take from his virtues. Wa akum qawliha wa astaghfiru Allah ahim wa lakum misal in muslimina wa astaghfiru inna hu wa al-ghafur rahim. Alhamdulillah ya Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa ba'd. قال رب تبارك وتعالى في كتابه الكريم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وانتموا نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعلمون ولا تكونوا كالذين نسوا الله فأنساهم أنفسهم أولئك هم الفاسقون وقال عز وجل في مقام آخر مخبرا عن مقام نبيه صلى الله عليه وسلم وآمر بحقه يتقال إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى سيدنا محمد وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت وحفظت وبارك على سيدنا إبراهيم على آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة ومن عذاب النار اللهم نعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم إنا نسألك بكتب خير سألك منه سيدنا محمد النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من كل شر استعاذك منه سيدنا محمد النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ربنا تقبل منا
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. 